Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap-up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include CD Projekt Red changing directions, the latest ARPG Magic Legends going into open beta, some Diablo news, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description below, but right before you skip ahead, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted to new Saturday episodes and stay up to date with gaming news highlights. Now, before we move on, just a quick word from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. I built my website, Riker.com, using Squarespace, and I was able to do everything myself, quickly and easily, and with zero education in the field, all thanks to how easy Squarespace is to work with. With Diablo 3's new season having just started, I had to update my website to include my latest video guides. Watch how easy it is for me to make basic maintenance changes to my website. No coding knowledge needed, just a few intuitive clicks, and you've got yourself a professional looking website. Basically, if you want to build a website, I recommend Squarespace. And Squarespace is currently offering my viewers 10% off your first purchase with them. Just go to squarespace.com slash Riker or click the link in the description to sign up and start building your online presence. That's squarespace.com slash R-H-Y-K-K-E-R and use code Riker to get started today. In our first story, CD Projekt Red has released patch 1.2 for Cyberpunk 2077. And it includes over 500 fixes. Cyberpunk is certainly one of those cases where it'll pay off for the patient gamers. Those who didn't pre-order... I'm going to wait for more content to release, wait for more bugs to be fixed, and I maybe buy the game as a discounted bundle in a, a year or so. Avoid all those nasty release pains, you know? But meanwhile, it seems CD Projekt Red has learned a thing or two about building hype for a decade before a game releases. During a strategy presentation this week, the company stated that future marketing campaigns will be much shorter, with promotional content released closer to the actual release of the given game. The company also revealed a new strategy that it would use going forward that would involve working on multiple AAA games and expansions in parallel. We also learned that the company is rethinking the multiplayer cyberpunk release they've previously talked about, which while never fully explained seemed like it would be a pretty big deal since it would be a standalone product. The studio head stated, quote, Previously, we hinted that our next AAA would be a multiplayer cyberpunk game. But we have decided to reconsider this plan. Given our new, more systematic and agile approach, instead of primarily focusing on one big online experience or game, we are focusing on bringing online into all of our franchises one day. We are building an online technology that can be seamlessly integrated into development of our future games. Now, reconsider doesn't mean cancelled, but why say it at all if it wasn't to lower our expectations. And honestly, focusing purely on the single player of Cyberpunk right now should be their focus, so it's not a bad thing. However, the company did also announce this week its acquisition of Canadian studio Digital Scapes, which specializes in multiplayer games. And the studio has been working on Cyberpunk since October 2018 but it's unclear how or if this may change going forward. Clearly though, they're part of CD Projekt Red's multiplayer plans. In other news, we got the reveal of a new game called Loot River. I'm not normally terribly into pixel graphics, but this game is visually beautiful within its style and has some clear ARPG gameplay in it. The devs describe it as a dungeon crawling action roguelike that combines tense real-time combat and dark fantasy settings with spatial block shifting. And you can see a brief clip of an equipment and stat screen that feels very RPG. So there's definitely stuff in here that has me interested. And the sliding box aspect especially has me intrigued. I always love to see innovation. And speaking of innovation, a new action RPG, Magic Legends, has entered open beta. And after one week of relatively bad reception, the devs released a patch that addressed some of the bigger complaints, which is promising. At the very least, the team has maintained open communication with the community, which is great, but I've been seeing a lot of negativity about this game. Now, I've apparently logged about 15 hours in the game, although a lot of that is probably me reading chat while I'm streaming. And while I'd like to do a full video about the game at some point, things have been really busy for me lately with the Diablo 3 season start. So 
In the meantime, at least, I'll give some quick impressions here. First off, the biggest distinguishing factor between Magic Legends and other ARPGs is the skill system. Your skills are basically Magic the Gathering cards. You build a deck of cards, and four of those cards are randomly dealt into your hand as skills that you can use. When you use a skill, it goes back into your deck, and you're dealt another random card. Now, you have a couple of basic skills that never change, but for the most part, the skills you're using are constantly changing, and so you're at the whims of chance to know what cards you'll be dealt. Of course, within the pre-selection you've made to build your deck. I think this is a really innovative system, and I love to see innovation in the rather stale ARPG genre. But this system will be and has been a deal breaker for a lot of players. It's not for me, but I've not yet faced any real challenging content. But I do wonder, when I get to that point, will I be frustrated that I can't rely on muscle memory to press on the skill that I expect to be associated with a given key? Will I be frustrated that I have to, instead of pay attention to the combat, constantly be looking down at my skill bar to see what skills I have? That I have to remember what icon represents what skill, because I don't have time to mouse over and read the description. Part of me wonders, would this game be better served being a slower paced game or a game rather in which you can pause the game to then mouse over your skills and see what you have? Now, I do like that this system makes me use a much wider array of skills in combat than most ARPGs, which tend to revolve around just a single attack skill that you spam over and over, maybe with some other skills that you're using to provide either defense or mobility or some kind of buff or control. This is a nice way to make the combat less monotonous, but it is that trade-off. Because, yeah, when things are random, they're less monotonous. But another thing that's random and not monotonous is having a rocket launcher that'll fire a banana, an orange, a grenade, a cat. You never know, it's always random. Otherwise, the combat, the visuals, the quests, the boss fights, they're all quite competent, average or above average at least. I was definitely enjoying myself for the first several hours of the game. But I did notice that in the last few hours, my enjoyment was dropping. I currently don't feel very incentivized to keep playing. I think part of it is because after 15 hours-ish of gameplay, I don't feel like I've really progressed all that much with my character. The campaign feels good. Going through that, I feel like I've made progress in the world. But as for my own character, I feel like, yes, I've acquired some stuff, but I've not evolved significantly. I don't feel like I'm really that much more powerful. I don't feel like I've really made any choices that have had a, a significant impact on my gameplay that, you know, hours elapse and it's still the same gameplay from hours ago, which is normal in the end game of an ARPG. But typically in the early game, you're making these evolutionary choices with your character that are happening rather frequently. It's not about giving you everything right away, but it's about as you're branching out on a tree, you're you're developing, you're learning new skills, and now you're using this skill, and then two hours later, oh, I got this weapon, and so now I'm gonna de you know, I'm gonna acquire this skill and change my gameplay that way. I feel like I'm building my character in some way, and I just don't get that feeling in Magic Legends. I feel that if I were to make a new character of the same class, that after X hours of gameplay, I would be in the exact same spot I am now. And part of that is that you're building this big deck, so you have like 12 s skills that you're rotating through. And so when you get a new skill, well, it's shuffled in there, and it'll sometimes come up. But you really need to acquire a huge amount of skills before you're really able to deck build. I feel like deck building is kind of an end game thing. Uh, and I, the idea of the deck building really intrigues me. I like that idea. But it feels like I have to really get through a bit of a slog now to get to the point of the game becoming more fun again. Now, one thing about this game that has been heavily criticized is the monetization model. It's free to play with microtransactions that involve more than just cosmetics. I haven't looked closely into it yet because I already dislike this monetization model. So for me, the question isn't do I like this or dislike it? It's how much do I dislike it? And I just feel like I need to fully understand the game before I can really judge how bad the MTX is. I can see what I can buy. I just don't really fully understand if I don't buy it, how long does it take me to get this naturally? What really is gating me? 
how further along would someone who is paying be versus someone who is not paying? These are all questions that I don't know the answer to, but I just don't like that I have to ask these questions to begin with. And I'll note that I never got into Magic the Gathering itself, the actual card game, because I don't like that monetization model either. Uh, but, you know, maybe for MTG players, this is all okay. And overall, I do get the sense that Magic Legends is not an ARPG made for ARPG fans, but rather an ARPG made for MTG fans, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I mean, the very nature of the skill system is definitely the game's greatest distinguishing factor, and is definitely designed to be an MTG thing. This isn't just an ARPG, some generic ARPG set in the, the lore of Magic the Gathering. This is something that takes the core, the very essence of what MTG is and always has been and builds that into an ARPG. Now, I hope I have more to talk about with this game in the future, but if you've played, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. On to some quick path of exile news. With the next expansion, Ultimatum, set to release on April 16th, the devs are working on something that players have been asking for for a while now, performance improvements. Details in the patch notes, Link in the video description. On to some Wilson news. The devs have revealed the first content update for Chronicle 1 Blood Trail. Titled Bloodstorm, it introduces 4 new environments, 13 new environment variants, skill rebalancing, skill visual improvements, 7 new skill damage type modifiers, 30 new expedition levels, pets picking up gold, dodge rolls now go through enemies, bug fixes, and more. Overall, it's a nice update, and it's nice to see the game continue to get support by the devs. But in addition to the bug fixes and skill rebalancing, which is great to be doing, I think the focus should be on new content, like new items, rather than improvements of a more visual nature, since the game already looks gorgeous. I don't think that's a complaint that anyone has had about the game. On to some last Epoch news. The upcoming ARPG continues to get regular updates, with a couple patches releasing that included bug fixes and updates to unique items. Also, the game has hit this week a record in concurrent players at over 7,000. This is definitely a game to keep an eye on, and hopefully public multiplayer testing starts soon. On to some Diablo news. Season 23 of Diablo 3 began last night. If you haven't seen it, check out my tier list video on the best builds of the season, and once you've picked something, be sure to follow my build guide video about it. I also have a video about ways to level rapidly at the start of a new season, if you're looking to speed your way to 70. In other Diablo news, Carbot has released another episode of his Diablo 2 series. This episode revolves around the search for Kalim's heart. And Carbot also released a great April Fool's gag, a cartooned Diablo 2 graphics pack. And in case you're not aware, Blizzard actually added a Carbot graphics pack to StarCraft Remastered, so you never know. Lastly, I wanted to bring your attention to this Diablo-inspired cosplay. It's basically a Diablo skin for an Overwatch character named Brigitta, and it's created by Kamui Cosplay. Just an incredible shield design. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. But do be sure to have checked out last week's video in which we discuss potential deeper changes to Diablo 2 Resurrected. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.